Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor David, welcome. Thank you. Uh, another week has come by, and, and it seems like the weeks are just moving and moving and moving. And, you know, with that, your, your series in Mark, also a little bit in Romans, you mentioned some of the things, because last week we talked about the evilness that is present in the dark days. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and today, Pastor, I wanted to ask you, is there anything missing from the church and I don't mean missing like tangibly, like music or anything, but anything spiritually, because there can be this tendency for Christians to be walking more in the flesh than in the spirit. I, I hate to make generalizations because obviously I can't, I can't judge every person's life and say this is missing per se. I think that's an introspection that needs to take place in the heart of the person who is a believer already. But as an observer of the church in general or church life in general, and as a person who's been part of the body of Christ uh, for a number of years, and as one who has been given the privilege, opportunity, and responsibility of ministering to people for a number of years, I, I would say that through my own observation, the church in general seems to have a weakness. Um, we, we have, as, as a people, perhaps grown cold, maybe even a bit indifferent, maybe naive. I don't know what the proper way of saying it. Those words could all probably apply to certain segments of the life of the body of Christ in the United States, but I think there is a missing ingredient that um, can, I can kind of share a little bit about, and that is the, uh, the hunger for the power of the Spirit of God within us and the awareness that the power of the Holy Spirit is intended to produce transformed lives. <clears throat> there are those who seem to, and I see it on TV, and perhaps it's just an unfair characterization of the church, but it seems sometimes when I've seen, and I don't watch hardly any at all Christian TV, I can't do it anymore because it's so mind-numbing and so shallow in so many ways and so carnal, I, I would say, that that uh, the Holy Spirit has become more of a, a novelty, perhaps as a means to an end for some. If you walk in the Spirit, you're going to be able to, by faith, um, you know, almost command. I've actually heard the words command God um, for the things that you want, the pleasures or delights or what you would perceive as blessings. Uh, and, and oftentimes it is hidden or cloaked in a phrase, uh, walking in the Spirit or being mm-hmm. under the influence of the Spirit or praying by the Spirit. So. I've said many times, especially in more recent years, in one form or another, that God gets blamed for an awful lot of carnality, John. You know, so people will be in your fellowship, for example, and decide to leave, and they don't ever say anything to anybody who knows them. Perhaps they they may even leave ministries that they've been involved in, and sometimes even ministries they've led in, and they don't even... Uh, have the courtesy, brotherly love, or any of that to let those who worked with them or helped them or s- they served under, they don't even have the, the courtesy of telling them that uh, they no longer are going to be there, they go someplace else. And so when asked or when spoken to, as I've done in the past, haven't seen you, how are you? Oh. The Spirit led me out, you know? <laughs> so God gets, God gets blamed, right. and the Holy Spirit gets blamed for the carnality and fleshliness of many in the body of Christ. So what's missing? I would say this, the, the realization that the Spirit is referred in Scripture as the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is intending to work within us a holy life, right? I've heard it said, and I've said myself, the Holy Bible and the Holy Spirit produce holy people. So when you're you're walking according to the Word of God and by the power of God, then your life is going to be demonstrating that you're sold out to and set apart by God, right? 
So what would I say by observation? I'd say that that uh, that many in the body of Christ are, are not hungering for the things of the Lord. They're not a, they're not actually aware of the times that they're living in, and and their Christian faith, if it's real at all, ha has been um, overshadowed by their their desire for the pleasures of the age, mm -hmm. John. And so what's missing in the church? A hunger for God, a, a hunger for His Word, a hunger for fellowship, a hunger for communion with Him in the sense of being led by the Spirit. And, and what's missing is, is a, a, a hunger for, for His power working in us to transform us so if there's anything I see lacking in the church today, it, it's within the church, and the church itself does not realize who they are. Mm -hmm. I had a, uh, and I'll, I'll close with this simple illustration. Um, my son David had a, had a, uh, a Rottweiler, and, uh, you know, she, she came from a, uh, a father and mother. Uh, the father was almost 200 pounds, and the wow. mother was 180 wow. pounds. She was kind of a runt. She never grew more than a little over 100 pounds, 110, I think. But she was a Rottweiler. And uh, my, bro my son brought her to, to the church one day, and I was taking her for a walk, walking the church grounds with her. And we came up to a fence, and on the si other side of the fence was a goose. And uh, as we walked by the fence, the Roddies saw the, the goose and put her little nose against, the, well, not little nose, put her nose against the uh, chain link. And the goose and the mate, the, the male, spread his, his, his wings out and started making noises and rushed towards this <laughs> Rottweiler. Now there's a fence separating them. And that Roddy pulled me, has dragged me, <laughs> you know, away from the fence. She was so scared at uh, what had just happened. And, and it hit me, you know, this is a Rottweiler. And there is a fence separating. And, and, and I learn lessons of the Spirit sometimes, so just practical things, John. And, and I couldn't help but begin to meditate on that. And I thought, you know, that could be me. You know, the enemy will make threatening advances, but there's a link, chain link fence. He can't get to me. And yet my response to something like that is to, to flee <laughs> rather than resist the devil and he will flee from you. Um, mm. He only has to do is bluff and attempt or pretend. And, and in many ways he, he does that through the fears that he imparts to believers by the cancellation of their faith, by the by the press telling everybody how bad we are constantly, that the real threat in the United States is patriotic Christians, for example, and all of that, white males. Uh, that's the real threat in the United States is as we have drag queens and story hours, as we have men saying that they can have babies and have menstrual periods and things of that nature, and we're living in a crazy time. And what's the church do is the church uh, basically h hides uh, because for whatever reason, we're afraid to confront evil for what it is, and the mask has been taken off. And so what is missing in the church? An awareness of the times that we're living in, a walk of the power of the Holy Spirit, a knowledge of Scripture, and an awareness that we are more than conquerors through Christ. Amen. You know, we are already victorious. In Christ, we, we have won. We need to live as if we understood that. So Amen. that's missing in the church. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor, for sharing that, uh, because, again, as, as evil as a mask itself, seems like the church is just, you know, that Rottweiler, that's a great illustration. Yeah, it just runs, and, and then we're walking in the flesh and not walking in the spirit. Yeah. So, well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing that. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Invite you to our Wednesday evening service at 7 p.m. in Romans. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. A great opportunity to invite your friends to come out and join us. Then we have our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45. And I'm looking forward to the direction you're going from where you're wrapping up and no secrets or no hints, just come to church and see where you're going to go uh, with that. And then men, we, this is our last week to purchase our breakfast tickets for the men's conference. Sunday's the deadline. I want to encourage you again to purchase your tickets. We're going to have a great, uh, great time in the Word. 
with the great guest speakers Pastor David will be sharing with us along with NFA, NFL Hall of Famer Anthony Munoz and Pastor Ken Graves from Bangor, Calvary Chapel, Bangor, Maine. So we've got a lot of great opportunities to, for us to join together, but we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday and on Sunday. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor.